Okay, so now we're at question number 18 of the ACT English test. Let's begin by reading it as is. Whatever words remain, and then the words, dash, are often barely legible, pale fragments of yesterday's consumer culture should strike me as silly or sad. Okay, so this is a very long sentence, and the best thing that we can do is find a good place to put a period so we don't have to continually read the sentence as is if we wanted to run through a couple of answer choices. So here I have are often barely legible. Perfect. So I could put a period here, and let's just scratch the rest of this, and that'll shorten it up so we don't spend all our time reading the uh, other part of the sentence. Okay. So now what we need to do is figure out which one of these options is correct. Now the concision subvocalization technique really isn't going to help you in this case. Now if you're not sure, you can always start with the most concise answer, which is the one with the least amount of punctuation in this case, which is answer choice F, and see if this is correct or not. Now the only way to assess it is to know our punctuation rules. So we have uh, part of a sentence up here, and then we have this dash, and then we continue on with the rest of the sentence. In order to assess if this is right, what we're gonna need to do is know the rules for using dashes, or m dashes is what they're really called. So I have a dash right there, or an m dash, and if I have one, it's the same thing as using colons. Well, that begs the question, when do we use colons? We use colons only if we have an independent clause and an independent clause is a complete thought. It's a complete sentence, you could say. I could put a period at the end of an independent clause. And on the right-hand side, I have a couple of different options. You could put a list, right, which is what most students see or think of when they see colons. But I don't want you to stop there. It could be a question. It could be some sort of a illustration, right? I'll just put I for illustration. But it doesn't matter, just as long as all of that stuff on the right-hand side is modifying what was on the left. A lot of students think list and stop there, but on the ACT, rarely are they going to have a list to the right of the colons. So be prepared to recognize any sort of modifier to the right of the colons. Just make sure you have an independent clause on the left. Okay, so knowing this, let's run through answer choice F and see if this makes sense. I have the dash here. So the real question is, is this an independent clause to the left? Whatever words remain. No, nope, that's not an independent clause. I don't even have a verb. So it sounds awkward, right? And I don't have a verb. So we know that F cannot be correct because I have a dash here and I do not have an independent clause to the left of it. Okay. so. That's the use case for using one dash. What about two of them, as in the case of G, two dashes? Well, that's going to be my second use case. So I'm going to put a two uh, right here. And now I will put two dashes down, right? Because according to G, I would put a dash right here. I'd have a dash here and then a dash here, in which case I have two dashes. Well, this is another use case for the dashes. And it's like using two commas, right? I'll put two commas here. And it's just like using two parentheses. I'll put the parentheses right here. So this is a, this line here is just my information. This line here is my information. And I'll put a line here to represent some, some text, some information. We use commas or parentheses or two M dashes to separate out non-essential information from the rest of the text. And let me say that again, we use these two um, M dashes or two commas or two parentheses to separate out non-essential information from the rest of the text. And this one looks a little awkward, so I'm just going to get rid of that and we'll put it up here because these are commas. Great. So let's take a look and see if we have any non-essential information. Well, if this all was non-essential because it would have been separated by the two dashes, the rest of the sentence should read just fine. Whatever words remain are often barely legible. Perfect. That sounds fine. I correctly annotated that. I took out the unnecessary information. And so answer choice G would be just fine if I put the two uh, M dashes there. So let's circle G. 
but let's go through the other options and see why they are also incorrect. Okay, H, H has a comma here, right? Okay, so can I have a comma and an M dash? No, I can't. I either need two M dashes or I need two commas. I can't start with a comma and then end with an M dash. I have to be consistent, so answer choice H is incorrect. Okay, how about answer choice J? We already answered this question. Right here we have colons. Whatever words remain, is that an independent clause? No, it's not. So again, that would have to be wrong as well. Okay, so the only way to answer question number 18 correctly is if you knew your punctuation rules. Memorize those rules if you have not already. And uh, in future, uh, on future questions, uh, you will see these presented again. And uh, the rules are, are pretty simple. So as long as you memorize them, they're finite. Uh, then you're going to get these questions right in the future. Thank you.